Look at her, look how cute she is. Look how cute she is. She doesn't like to be held though. She doesn't like to be held. Ah, ah, ah. She still has all her claws. Hi guys. I was just gonna let you guys know that uh, we might be doing something a little bit different from now on. Uh, I might talk to you guys for like the first 5, 10, 15 seconds of the video like this. Uh, just to let you guys know what's been going on in my world before we start the countdown videos. Um, which brings me to this countdown video. It's going to be about the top 10 creepy places about RuneScape. And I was trying to think all night what to do about the creepy places in RuneScape because obviously Drainer Manor should be in there. Obviously the Broken Home Quest thing that you gotta go through in RuneScape 3 should be in there. But I didn't really know what to talk about about them. So what I did was I looked up some information about the game history behind them, like the storylines of how they came to be and stuff like that. And I thought that some of them were really creepy, so that's what I did uh, in the video, is I put them all together based on the history of them. And I think it turned out pretty good. I think you guys will like it. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you guys want me to keep doing this, this whole face cam thing at the beginning of every single countdown video for maybe like 5 to 10 seconds introducing what the countdown video might be, let me know and I'll keep doing it. So, yeah, let's get the countdown started. Number 10, Elvark's Lair. During the first century of the Fifth Age, Crandor was an important location in Gylenor's South Sea, with a well-established colony and shipping route all over the world. In year 139 of the Fifth Age, a Crandorian adventurer discovered and ventured into a deep dungeon at the summit of the hill on Crandor, which made up the island. Upon entering, he woke an evil dragon, Elvar, from her slumber and enraged her, causing her to rise from the mountain and annihilate the human community on Crandor, torching the island black in the process. Survivors fled to the friendly shores of Esgarnia, forming refugee camps at Remington. However, Elvarg was not content yet, so she flew away from Crandor and found the refugees in Remington and killed them all. All but three of the refugees, leaving them to go to their separate ways. Among the three were Melzar, Lozar, and Thalzar, and they decided that nobody should ever have to suffer what they've already endured. So they split the last navigational map to Crandor in three pieces, and they hid them well. Thus, many centuries later, the Dragon Slayer quest was born, and the first time you ever do this quest as a free player at a low level, she will scare the fuck out of you. Number 9, The Underground Pass. In the early years of RuneScape, this place was used as a trading route by the elves from the most western lands. But later, when Prythenus became under control of the evil elves that rebelled in those lands, Iben, the spiritual son of Zamorak, took control of the pass. During the quest given to you by King Lythus, you are tasked with killing Iben. After that, only then will the Underground Pass be under the command of King Lathus from East Ardoin. Since Iben studied under Lord Dequarius prior to taking over the Underground Pass, and Dequarius is said to only be in his 30s at the time that this game currently takes place, Iben himself has to be even younger, and this would mean that his takeover of the Underground Pass was a relatively recent event. Be wary though, traveling here, you will run into all sorts of trouble before making it to the other side, or making it to Ivan himself. Number 8, West Ardoin, the plague city called by many, and the capital kingdom of Kindarin, well known for being badly stricken by a mysterious plague which has been claiming the lives of many, it has been claimed to have been brought into the area upon its king's last visit, and some even speculate that the underground pass may be somewhat of the cause of the plague too. Its neighbor, East Ardoin, however, is thriving in wealth and popularity, while the people of this town slowly die. Although West Ardoin was governed by King Tyrus, he left the city just before the plague outbreak also struck the forests of the elven realm Tyrunun. He was a disregarded king, and the day-to-day -day running of the district in his absence was left in the hands of an inefficient drunk city warder named Bravik. Mourners from East Ardoin sent by King Lathis patrolled the streets and detained anyone that was affected by the plague. They then took the victims down into the tunnels underneath the city to work as slaves, and after the Ardoin Revolution, the mourners were evicted, and in their place were put the Knights of Ardoin. The city, now under King Tharos, is still recovering from the damage done through the years of isolation and oppression. But what is creepy about this city most of all is the fact that eventually, by an adventurer, the plague samples were smuggled out of the city and given to capable people to test the samples. They found absolutely no trace of any sort of plague whatsoever. Number 7. Tana was a young boy when he left his home in Verok in search of a more exciting life away from his parents. He traveled east of Verok but did not make it far. 
Shortly after leaving his home, Tolna discovered a strange crevice in the woods. He moved closer to investigate it and he fell in. He fell in this rift and it became his imprisoned home for the next 25 years. Tolna's emotions caused the rift to change. His emotions, which were mostly confusion, fear, and hopelessness, were manifested in the cavern's chambers. Tolna descended further into inevitable madness and lost his humanity. Upon an adventurer completing a soul's bane, Tolna told them that while trapped, he could feel an evil power emanating from the area. He believes that this is what caused him to go insane and made the dungeon twist to his emotions. While down there, he found remnants of the ancient civilization that stories talk about in RuneScape. It seems people used to worship a god here years ago in numbers far greater than a simple cult following. Tolna states to the adventurer, It's like there is some evil power under the ground that wanted me to suffer, as if it got some sort of empowerment from it. At least whatever it is, it doesn't want to reveal itself to the world just yet. Number 6. Canifus in the Second Age, many years ago, what is now Canifus was part of the god Zaros' empire, and it was where Zerosian fortress Kareel once stood. Hence why the ancient teleporting spell to travel to Canifus is named Kareel. The kingdom to the south of it was known as Hyloval, with its capital city ruled by the ancient, incredibly long-lived winged beings called the Iceni. As part of the Zerosian extermination, Kareel was destroyed during God Wars, but it is unknown whether Lord Draken was responsible for this when he invaded Hollowvale with an army of vampires. Whichever the case, the area would be a part of Mauritania from that point onward. In year 23 of the Fifth Age, a group of werewolves built a village named Canifus at the place where Carl once stood, where they live today. Like all subjects in Mauritania, they are forced to pay with blood tithes to the vampires. But the vampires agree to take captured humans instead if the werewolves don't really want to pay taxes with their own blood. Number 5. Port Phasmatis The exact date when Port Phasmatis was built is unknown, though it is widely believed that Port Phasmatis was created somewhere around the year 1777 of the Fourth Age, when many Mistalanian settlers left their homeland for a new life in Mauritania. Phasmatis was a busy market town and was in trade with many places of Gylenor and possibly even the mysterious eastern lands nobody can access now today. It was one of the most successful and famous ports of Gylenor for a time. It wasn't until the vampires of the Sanguinesti region started demanding blood tithes on the residents, taxing them with their own blood, much like the werewolves from Canifus. The people of Phasmatis were hopelessly turned to Necrovarus, a stranger from the eastern lands who knew something about the existence of a substance called ectoplasm below the town's temple. He ordered the citizens to dig beneath the temple until they found the lake of ectoplasm. Necrovarus used ectoplasm to create the ectofungus, which in turn created a powerful barrier around the entire port. This barrier repelled vampires effectively, preventing them from invading the town. But in turn, it made the citizens also unable to leave the town because of the barrier around it, and it resulted in the entire city's civilians' deaths. And now they are cursed as ghosts, even, to live out the rest of their spiritual lives in the Port Phasmatis area as well. Necrovarus, who planned all of this, took control over the town. He was using the power of the ghosts and the ectofungus for his own evil purposes, until one day an adventurer stopped him in a quest that could only be named Ghosts Ahoy. Number 4. The Ruins of Uzer Uzer was once a very popular city and currently the only known city in RuneScape which had the knowledge to create clay golems. Uzer was inhabited by many magical craftsmen and it is the first place where the Pyramid of Gylenor, the very first one, called the Uzer Mastaba was built. Uzer was ruled by the Desert Pantheon back then. They were a group of the Desert Gods who controlled the once enormous Menifite Kingdom. When the god Zaros had fallen at the end of the Second Age, the many followers of Zaros fled to the desert trying to flee from the other gods' armies who were attempting to destroy them. It could have been that Uzer was once controlled by Zarosian followers for a time, but there is no true record of this. When Zamorak returned from his banishment and declared war upon the gods, the god wars broke out and the Caridian Desert became the site of many battles. Many other gods sent their armies towards the Caridian Desert and attempt to conquer it for their own. According to some carvings on the temple below the ruins of Uzer, the citizens of Uzer worshipped Zamorak, Saradomen, and Armadil. 
so it could be that the religion of Uzer switched many times during the God Wars. 2,500 years ago, toward the end of the God Wars, Zamorak allowed his demon chief, Lieutenant Thamaron, to launch an assault upon Uzer, but Uzer easily defended itself with its clay golems. However, Thamaron launched a successful surprise attack at the opening portal to Uzer's central temple complex. Today, only the ruined buildings remain, and no signs of previous human habitation discernible. However, a single clay golem, though badly damaged, has survived, preserved in the sand. Demon chief of Zamorak Thamaron's corpse and throne can still be found inside his realm, and it is visited in several quests. Number 3. Drainer Manor A large haunted mansion north of Drainer Village. Its owner is Count Victor Drainer Draken, and he is mentioned by one of the seven signature heroes, Xenia, as one of the last living vampires who have crossed the border between Miss Thalin, the Caridian Desert, and Mauritania, known as the River Salve, which is reportedly his reason for being so weak, and also the reason why he stays down in his manor in the basement locked away in his coffin for protection. He is responsible for many deaths of avid adventurers who have fallen prey to his sharp fangs in their necks. Nobody knows exactly when Drainer Manor was built, but the owner has been around for centuries to give you a bit of an idea. It consists of four levels and is central to three quests. It also holds the portal that grants access to the mysterious dimension where Killer Watts reside. The manor is home to several different types of monsters and various oddities. These ghosts are everywhere inside, even ghosts hanging from the noose in the back of the manor's yards. There's even cabbage that has been poisoned in the gardens due to the soil being cursed by some sort of wicked and evil magic. According to the scared inhabitants of Drainer Village, one being Miss Chisholm located outside of the wise old man's house, she says a committee once tried to restore the manor and they called themselves the Drainer Manor Restoration Fund. They tried restoring it, but for some reason they one day quit, packed their bags, and left. Number 2. The Broken Home A huge mansion far bigger than the Drainer Manor and far more confusing in its twists and turns and maze-like concept, and it's also far more creepier as well as it is haunted. Outside the entrance of the house is a woman crying desperately needing the help of a passing adventurer. She is a distressed servant and she says to you that inside the house lived her master. However, the house has become under siege by ghosts and demons. Unlike any other demons or ghosts you'll find regularly wandering around the lands of RuneScape. The ghost haunting the house has killed many of the servants already, and she tells you that Ingram, the owner of the house, found the ghosts and is still inside the mansion. She asks that you go into the house willingly to save the other servants as well as Ingram's life too. However, when you enter this house and see the mad and macabre, you know straight away that this place was rid of human life far before you entered it. Wandering through the rooms blindly and completing puzzles, peeking around doorways for danger, you uncover the secrets of this mansion and find out the reasons why the ghosts are haunting the mansion still today, along with the creepy ambience and music and noises you hear whilst inside the house. It's definitely Jagex's best work yet as far as the creepy factor goes and the storylines of any quest or Halloween event, which is how it started in RuneScape. Only until you find out why the ghost haunts the mansion and solve its problems, you will never be able to find out whether or not the servants as well as Ingram is still alive. Number 1. The Wilderness the area that is now the wilderness was formerly known as Forenthry. Like the rest of Gylenor, it was shaped by the god Guthix during the First Age, and it was an era filled with nature and life and beauty. Forenthry was very rich with resources, and so a perfect place to build settlements. Many settlements were built whose most powerful were the ancient cities of Dariak, Karayongar, Anakarl, and Gorok. Forenthry formed a very big part of Zaros' mighty empire, which was the most powerful empire of Gylenor at the time, and stretched from northern Forenthry through the northwest of Misthalen to the northeast of now present day Mauritania. Near the end of the Second Age, Zamorak wanted to overthrow Zaros and was able to collect a group of followers and got his hands on the staff of Armadil, and he attacked Zaros' castle, and after the intense, long-lasting battle of Forenthry, Zaros was defeated. Zamorak returned to the people as a god, with an army so big everybody surrendered to him, and then he would decide then to conquer the world and declared war on all the other gods, starting the God Wars and them lasting all the way up until now, current day. 
Forenthry is now known as the wilderness among many and is nothing more than a cursed wasteland. Many go here to fight out of anger now, and many die here by the creatures left behind from the ancient ages that now call these lands home. That's it for this countdown. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you know what I should count down next, post it in the comment section. Let's make it happen. I'm gonna leave now. Bye! <laughs>